Better Call Saul has now come to an end, and with season 6, I think we got one of the best seasons of television in years. After 61 episodes, we got the culmination of visually beautiful, tension-filled, and fulfilling drama TV, becoming just as impactful as Vince Gilligan's previous show. In this video essay, I'm going to be discussing why I think season 6 of Better Call Saul is a masterpiece, and one of the best seasons that the Breaking Bad creators have ever put to screen. There will be spoilers in this video, so if you're not up to date on Better Call Saul, then I would recommend catching up before watching my analysis. But before I get into it, if you want to see topical videos on the ending of Better Call Saul, then don't forget to support this upload by giving it a like rating, subscribing to the channel, and turning on your notifications. Also, feel free to check me out on Twitter, Facebook, Reddit, and Instagram at Cortex Videos, which is all linked in the description below. But without further ado, let's dive into my review and analysis of Better Call Saul Season 6. So we finally say goodbye to Saul Goodman, the lead of the spin-off prequel we never expected to be as good as it was. Over its six seasons, Better Call Saul has grown into a more profound drama about the corruption of human nature, and it's developed into something more visually impactful and transcending than the parent show. That's not to say that one is better than the other, because I personally think both will go down as some of the greatest shows ever made. But on the topic of the prequel show, there hasn't been much on television that has dared to challenge us practically or emotionally as this has done, switching between storylines, telling us visually the importance of a given moment, or building to that in its perfect character expressions. It doesn't insult the audience's intelligence, and the narrative and character moments work because they keep the central questions in mind. We were constantly asking this season, how and why does Jimmy McGill becomes Saul Goodman? What happens to Kim and why is she not in Breaking Bad? And what does Gene Takovic do following his time in Omaha and how does this end the character we followed for many years? While we did get shocking answers to many of these questions, the back part of season 6 was able to give us more psychologically compelling reasons that link into exactly the problems that Jimmy has faced since the beginning with his multiple personas. There's a mixture of everything in the answers, whether it be the violence, death and darkness that sends Jimmy and Kim on their concluding arcs, or the light in Jimmy needing to free himself from the regret of his previous actions, and make it right with Kim Wexler. It's full-on character evolution that stayed true to Better Call Saul's more nuanced and silent take on this kind of development. Ending the story with Gene sketching an explosive plan to get everything he wanted is not how this show was going to end. And if you followed it from the start, you'll know that it's more interested in tackling the complicated nature of a man who on one side has always been drawn to this, and on the other, feels deep down in his soul, the pain and regret of things he's caused. It's an inverse to Breaking Bad in that sense that gives us a different story than the one that was told masterfully before. And I think most of this comes through how the final season has managed to meld genres so effectively. At times it was a part legal and relationship drama, following Jimmy and his wife Kim, and then it was also a crime thriller that spelled out Jimmy's tragic and destructive involvement with characters like Lalo, Gus and Mike. And even most of those characters are given much more human development towards what really makes them tick. In reference of that brilliant merging of genres though, I think if you look at all the different kinds of episodes we got in the final season, it makes the idea of pulling this off an even bigger accomplishment. Whether it be with the brutal and emotional impact of the rock and hard place episode, showing us that the supporting players can't survive in a world that is so devastating and unrelenting. Or the plan and execution episode that details the twisting events surrounding Jimmy and Kim's plan 
trying to destroy Howard's career, then weaving all of the strands together and ending it with the most shocking act of violence by Lalo right in front of them. Or even the consequences of that moment in the following episodes with the masterful tension of point and shoot being shown to us in real time and fun and games going deep into the mindset of Jimmy and Kim and what it means for their futures during Breaking Bad. The confrontation between Kim and Jimmy here exposes the truth at the heart of their relationship, the poison that they are when they're together even though they're having fun. And that poison is communicated right from the start of the season with the Safiro Anejo bottle opener lying in the road and then also with the consequences for Jean and Saul after Kim walks out with the cardboard cutout of him placed in the bin right next to his now seized mansion. And this literally happens in the finale with Jean being caught while scrambling around with his belongings in the dumpster. It's a tightly perfected season of different genres within different episodes but they are brilliantly merged together with the same purpose in mind. Challenging what we know and what we are yet to know about how these characters function and what they feel towards everything that's happened. Kim's feeling of guilt changes everything for her, while Jimmy desperately tries to convince himself that everything can go on as normal. And while some would argue that the series should have ended after fun and games because it shows us the transformation of Saul and frames exactly what both Jimmy and Kim feel after everything they've been through, I'd argue that the last four episodes were the right place to go because they dealt with the crucial question that this show needed to answer following the dramatic turns in the previous episodes. And that is, what does Jimmy, Saul or Jean become in the aftermath and can he really overcome the loop he's been on since that very first season? The subsequent episodes, mostly shot in black and white, initially feel like an epilogue to the rest of the series after all the lawyer drama, tension and ultimately violence that takes place. But the slower pace is what makes this show come full circle in returning to exactly that kind of storytelling that Bella Call Saul has defined for itself. A visually meticulous and poignant telling of who Jimmy McGill truly is. We're first shown Saul's transformation into the Cinnabon manager Gene Takovic and it seems to us that he's done with the ways of the past. And the same goes for Kim, working for a sprinkler company with a quite dull lifestyle. But once the showrunners start to include colour flashbacks to important characters from the Breaking Bad world, it becomes very clear that this series has to answer the question of Jimmy's identity problem and what that means for the ending with himself and for Kim. Jimmy became Saul Goodman to get over Kim him and he then became Gene because he had no other choice. Slipping Jimmy, Saul and Gene can't resist the lure of the con and he comes up with a new one, starting with the elderly Marion and then with a shopping centre while he's in Omaha, resulting in his eventual downfall. And how perfect to then end the series where it began, both in a courtroom and then eventually with Jimmy and Kim in a prison cell, reflecting their first impactful moments. Throughout this season, we've wanted to know how Jimmy and Kim would be punished for the past and whether they can have some kind of closure or peace with themselves and each other. And we get probably the best answer to all of this. With Bob Odenkirk's heartfelt and deep performance, his character owns up to those regrets for himself and for Kim. And then when she shares a cigarette with Jimmy in jail, embodying those old ways that made them click, it acts as a satisfying end to this story. After many episodes of cartel violence, cons, family betrayals and brutal murders, all of that comes to the final expressions between Jimmy and Kim as they face their own forms of bittersweet justice. Jimmy faces a life in jail but he came clean and he's now somewhere where he can feel the freedom in not hiding that regret. And Kim faces her own criminal justice and like Jimmy, she's told the truth and has less of that burden of regret. They're both much better with each other and they've helped themselves too. 
Better Call Saul ends with an episode that touches on the past, examines the present, and looks at the future with the more optimistic view that regardless of a person's nature and what they've done, they can make a right choice. In that regard, Jimmy McGill's story is brought to an end in a satisfying way, and the themes of this Breaking Bad world are delivered on in all the ways a well-made drama should. Its thrilling tension, brutal gut punches, and emotional drama are just the basic reasons why. It can extend to Better Call Saul's use of cinematography, lingering on objects or mementos, like that previously mentioned bottle top, or the metal foil blowing in the desert, showing the show's confidence to take its time at developing ideas effectively. Ultimately, this show is a lesson in how television can be immersive, epic, yet deeply focused on detail. We never thought that a Saul Goodman prequel could match the idea Gilligan had for Breaking Bad, nor did we expect it to develop into the great show it's become. Walter White's journey from chemistry teacher to meth kingpin showed the evolution from light to dark, whereas Better Call Saul showed that Saul has always been bad, with heart embedded beneath. It's a show that has been about light and dark since the very beginning, and it spelled that out clear for us in the end more than ever. We were meant to believe that right up until the final moments, Jimmy will never change, but then he does make a better decision following all of those consequences. For a show that built its story around a comic relief side character, it's so great to see it end on such a high note, one that makes you trust these creators even more. It didn't only show us how effective a prequel series could be, but what a new drama in this world of anti-heroes could still do after already witnessing one of the best of all time. And while Ben Better Call Saul has evolved into one of the greatest TV shows itself, Jimmy evolved into a better person too. The idea we could take away from this is if someone as deeply bad as Saul Goodman can change, then why can't anyone? But that was my video essay on Better Call Saul Season 6, discussing why I think it's a masterpiece. There's been so many memorable moments in this show's final run, and personally, I think it will be a while before we see TV as well made and investing as this season has been. To be honest, I think season 6 of the show has gone near the top of my favourite seasons of all time, and Vince Gilligan and Peter Gould did a fantastic job of building up to what we've seen, and they really took the characters in logical directions based on how their stories have progressed. I'm looking forward to re-watching it and really seeing how the season lasts over time, but on the few times I have watched it through, it's already a season packed with quality that, like Breaking Bad, won't be forgotten about anytime soon. It makes me even more excited to see what Gilligan is doing with that new show he announced the other day. Vince, his showrunners and writers, have been so consistent with this world over the last two decades, and they've gone and delivered another iconic season season of TV. I'm giving Better Call Saul Season 6 a rating of 9.5 out of 10. If you want to check out any of my individual episode reviews for Season 6, they are all available on the channel, and the scores I've given them across the season have resulted in this overall score I've just presented. But what are your thoughts on the final season of Better Call Saul, and did you like it as much as I did? Let me know down below in the comment section. For more videos on the ending of Better Call Saul Season 6, then subscribe to the channel and turn on your notifications. Also, if you enjoyed this video, remember to leave a like rating and follow me on social media via the links in the description. But anyway, I hope you guys enjoyed it. I've been Cortex, and as always, make some noise.